understanding of anatomy that's my belief unless you know what is right you will never be able to diagnose what is wrong as simple as that which is why it's important to recognize friends that although teeth are at the front end of the system there is something at the back end of the system and that is your temporomandibular joint and you know the, the most beautiful structure that's present in between the two is your muscle and remember is the muscle that brings about the movement of the mandible all right so if there is a problem with the closure of the mandible if it's an occlusal issue maximum problems are associated with respect to muscular imbalance all right which is why someone who i adore that's late dr peter dawson very beautifully in his book scripted calling us physicians of the masticatory system he said physicians of the masticatory system must understand how all the interrelated parts of the system work in harmony that word harmony friends is very important why because if any one part of the system goes out of harmony all the parts get affected and and he beautifully says if teeth go in war with muscle muscle always wins also if joint goes in war with muscle muscle always wins which is why it is said friends that every occlusal therapy is targeted at achieving peaceful neuromusculature all right so a lot of importance that we give when we talk about management of orofacial pain is to bring about relaxation of the muscles the moment muscles relax symptoms that are caused because of lactic acid or abuse of the muscles almost uh with with the snap of a finger diminish and you know what happens patients cannot believe that you as dentists have managed their migraine headache you as dentists have taken issues that an ent could not these patients have often gone to neurosurgeons they have a lot of these patients are in chronic pain to a point that they even take antidepressants or or sleep medication only because uh, they know they are in pain but all their test reports are normal all right uh, they go from doctor to doctor to doctor and eventually they are said problem aapke body mein nahi problem aapke dimag mein hai and and this patient is now depressed because no one's been able to help them guess what we as dentists as physicians of the masticatory system can improve the quality of life it's just that we need to know we can and they need to know they have to come to us if they want to find relief from their chronic suffering all right now i am a firm believer friends that everything uh, in terms of human anatomy is to do with visualization so here i have a quick animation that helps you understand that the most important component of the system is that tiny piece of tissue that sits in the tm joint which is the disc now if you look through closely at this animation you will realize that the disc moves in cohesion with the condyle the condyle does not translate by itself but it moves along with the disc and this is where normal anatomic features come in why because if you look at this beautiful video you can clearly trace that you have the condyle at the bottom you have the glenoid fossa articular eminence on the top and you have the disc in the middle and you can see in this absolutely glorious video or how the disc moves in unison with the condylar head and remember this joint is synovial right so it's slippery smooth it's free flowing there is no friction which means there is absolutely no joint sound and no pain but remember everything is good till it is normal but here we are not just to discuss about normal but we are here to discuss about ab normal that is ab normal and here the first question that i have often asked is sir what causes a problem in the temporomandibular joint and i wish i could point out one thing but that's not the case when it comes to etiology of temporomandibular joints it is multifactorial which is why friends here i am only going to list reasons okay i do not have time to dwell into the depths of it which is why i have quoted at the bottom an article which is an absolutely amazing article that beautifully describes Uh, a list of temporomandibular joint causes and uh, here is is where dr james howard uh, in in dcna that's the dental clinics of north america january of 2013 beautifully divides the causative factors into 
predisposing, precipitating, and perpetuating causes of TMDs. Right, and and here is the list of it. Uh, although it may seem like an umbrella list, when you go into the depths of understanding, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And feel free to show this article to patients because they will understand that yes. I, I now begin to know why you have an important role to play in the management of my symptoms as a dentist. And let me bring your attention to uh, the very second one that is listed there, structural problems. If a patient has a malocclusion, all right, or a musculoskeletal problem or an articular issue or a developmental issue, these patients are now predisposed or prone to developing temporomandibular joint disorders. Right. Having said that, not all patients develop TMDs, right? If you have a bad bite, a few patients may develop TMD issues, other patients may not. So why is it that not everyone develops a TMD issue? And the answer is very simple. All right. Remember, every individual has a different adaptive capacity or what is called as the body threshold. Kuch log pain zada sahin kar sakte hai, kuch log nahi kar sakte hai. All right. And this is where that concept of predisposed patient comes in. If you have a predisposed patient, all right, and you introduce an occlusal issue into the patient's mouth, this patient is prone to developing a temporomandibular joint disorder. Okay, so very quickly here, I'm going to show you a very simple yet very, very beautiful illustration that, that one of my friends designed for me, which is again a part of the master volume uh, book that uh, Rajiv sir mentioned to us about at the beginning. All right, now look closely at this patient. This patient is said to have a uh, very good occlusal balance, uh, very good muscular balance. All right. Why? Because as you can see, the elevator muscles are active, but the depressor muscle, which is the lateral pterygoid, is inactive. We, we know there is a synergistic effect between the elevator muscles and the depressor muscles. Right. So now if this is a predisposed patient and let's say, for example, I put a high crown in the patient's mouth, like, like you can see, there's a four, seven, that is a high crown. That's why it's marked in red. And you tell this patient, don't worry. Right. This settling can cause a massive cascade of effect for your patients. You know why? Because look closely. Mandible, when it wants to settle, all right, when we tell the patient, do tin din do thik ho jayega bite. the bite has settled because the mandible has actually changed its position. This is where the mandible wants to close. Now look closely at the screen and the animation. With one high crown, friends, your entire mandible has to swing in a different dimension and then close. This is called as forced mandibular position. Because of your high crown, the entire mandible had to deviate or change its path of closure. Which is why let's look at this normal picture first. I want all of you all to pay attention uh, at the condylar position. This is friends called centric relation, which means the condyle is in its proper position. When you put a high crown, look closely at the condylar head. The condylar head has been pulled forward. And more importantly, look at the fact that how these muscles to begin with were very balanced. Now in this forced mandibular position, you can see that all the muscles are hyperactive. They are, they are red, they are angry. And this is where the patient starts getting symptoms. Often initially, friends, the symptoms are muscle related. We call this occluso muscle disorder. But if it's not taken care of in time, this develops into a TMD, which is a temporomandibular disorder. The basic difference between the two is muscular disorders are extracapsular, which means it's outside the capsule of the temporomandibular joint. Intracapsular disorders are TMDs, which means the disc has actually now been displaced from its proper position. All right. So this is where one single interference that you put into the patient's mouth, this could be a crown, this could be a filling, this could be a third molar, this could be a, a tooth that is not in its correct orthodontic position, it could be any form of occlusal pathology. But this alone can create a cascading effect for your patient. All right. And, and it's very, very important to recognize that one asymptomatic patient develops symptoms because of an occlusal overload. And what happens when there is an occlusal overload?